Oh my God, huge congratulations to anybody starting med school this fall. Welcome to misery. Just kidding. No, but in all seriousness, you are about to start an amazing journey and I want to share with you some tips to make that journey a bit easier for you. New year, new year, new medical students. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julia and I am a third year medical student. So being a third year means that my time is so limited. Between working in the hospital and studying for tests, there is just not as much time as I thought there was gonna be to do anything other than work and study. But I do know that around this time is when the new incoming first years are going to be starting medical school. So I had to create a video of things that I wish I knew coming into med school. I know you guys are probably stressed out and excited and experiencing a bunch of emotions about starting med school soon. So let's just jump right into it. What do I wish I knew coming into med school? <sighs> First and foremost, take the time you need to adjust. Medical school is not like undergrad or grad school even, and it is a completely different ball game. And you need that time to adjust to the rigor of the academics, to the clubs, to everything. So if you come into medical school thinking it's gonna be the same as like undergrad or something, then you might find too much on your plate that you might not be able to handle. So take your time and first get adjusted to your academics. You are going to have an overwhelming amount of material coming at you and I really can't emphasize this enough you're just gonna have to wait to experience it but it is unlike any other type of academic field so get adjusted to that first before you even think about extracurriculars and research and mentoring like you want to make sure that you're a good student first before you put all this stuff on your plate and overcommit, and then you are overwhelmed and not doing well academically one of my favorite faculty members at my med school always says don't forget your day job and being a student is the day job so you have to make sure you're solid on that first before you try to take on any other roles so don't forget the day job get your academics in line first take the time that you need whether that be weeks or even months for me personally it took my entire first year to even figure out how to take the tests and do well and you want to make sure you're straight first before you do anything else so that's number one, get adjusted. So what else do I wish I would have known? So step one, <laughs> USMLE step one. If anyone is like me and is a first generation medical student, barely knew what they were doing, was just happy to be accepted and be there, you may not fully grasp what step one is or the importance. But in a nutshell, step one is a licensing exam, which is the first step out of many, there's like three or four exams that you have to take in order to become a licensed physician. And step one is the first exam that you take in that series and it happens between like your second and third year of medical school. This test is huge. It is the determining factor in a lot of things, including which specialty you can go into, which program you get accepted to for residency, and it's just really important, you guys. And your score on this test determines basically your competitiveness. Now, step one has recently become pass-fail for the incoming class. This is a huge topic in and of itself, so I'm gonna save the discussion about it becoming pass-fail for another video, but just know that even though it's going to be pass-fail, which gives you a lot of leeway, right? You just need to pass it. Don't underestimate this exam. It is a hard exam. And what you learn in the foundational, the preclinical years, which is your first year and your second year, sets the tone for how you perform on this exam. So regardless of it now being pass fail, the information you are about to learn in your first year is super important for this exam, which basically summarizes this whole point of what I'm trying to make is that even though step one may now be pass fail for you or your incoming class, the information that you need to know for the exam, you're still about to learn. So make sure you still learn it well. Which goes back to my first point of just make sure you take the time to figure out how you learn best and how you're going to study in medical school to do well because you want to make sure you are very strong academically. And the last major topic that I want to address of things I wish I knew was resources. Which resources to use? You guys, no lie, there is an overabundance of resources for medical students. You have Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, First Aid, Pixarize, UWorld. It's too much. 
it's just a lot. And I wish I can just give you like a standardized recipe for this is what you should do to do well. But the thing is, is that many people do many different things and everybody kind of finds what makes them do well. So I can give you what worked for me, but if you're not the type of learner I am, then it may not work for you. So please keep that in mind in medical school when you're coming into medical school is that different things are going to work for different people. And if you try to do exactly what somebody else is doing and you find that it's not working for you, don't feel discouraged that what somebody else is doing doesn't work for you and rather find what works for you. If you're a visual learner, use videos, use boards and beyond, use sketchy or pixarized. If you're more of a textbook type of reader, use first aid. Part of the transition to medical school and to this type of learning is figuring out what works for you. And that is a personal type of thing. Your learning is your learning. So if your friend is like, oh, I'm doing boards and beyond and first aid and this, that, you know, just listen to it and keep it moving. Do what you find works for you. But generally, what I would recommend is use outside resources early. So I already mentioned first aid. First aid is a very general standardized book that pretty much everyone uses. So first aid is essentially a high yield book that prepares you for step one. The great thing about it is that in your preclinical years and first and second year, you will be taking shelf exams, which are subject based standardized exams that you have to take at the end of like each block or organ system. So after you finish pulmonology, for example, and you're done learning about the lungs and everything, you will have to take a pulmonology shelf exam, which tests you on all things lungs, the anatomy, the pathology, the physiology, all of that. So first aid has a pulmonology section and you go to that section and it literally has everything you need to know. So you can study for your shelf exam using first aid. So why using first aid is so important early on is because this is the book that prepares you for step one. So for example, if during pulmonology, you're preparing for your shelf by watching videos and using first aid and you, what we call annotate your first aid book, which means any extra information that you learn from other resources that isn't in first aid that you think is important, you can just document in your book, like note it in, write it in. Why that's key is because when it comes time for studying for step one in a year or two years after you start medical school, your first aid book will have already been completely annotated if you were using it from the beginning for all of your organ systems. This is huge, you guys, huge. This is something I didn't do because I didn't even know what first aid was. I was new to medical school. I was new to this whole thing. Nobody kind of showed me the ropes. I didn't have any mentors to guide me through this process. So I barely used first aid my first year. I didn't start using it to my second year. And I was then playing catch up because I had already learned a bunch of organ systems without annotating my first aid. So when it came time for step one, I had to go back and relearn all that stuff and annotate it in later, whereas some people had already had their first aid completely annotated and they just had to review it. So it's just a time saver. And I know a lot of this may not be making sense and I will make another video on study strategies for first and second year of medical school. But the key takeaway is to find resources that work for you and use them early. It will not only help you do better on your exams and shelf exams, but it will also set you up for a great foundation when studying for step one, which is the test of all tests. So just do yourself the favor and take the time while you're getting adjusted and transitioning to try out the different resources, see which ones work for you, and find a plan that works. I think that's about it for now, guys. But if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box below and I will get to them. Or if it's important enough, I'll even make a whole new video about it. But also just let your first year be fun, guys. It's a great time to find some really dope friends, to have fun, to not really have to deal with working and stuff yet. Just enjoy learning, enjoy being in a new environment. Definitely get to know your surroundings and where you are. If you're in a new city or a new area, get out and explore because trust me, in your second year and third year, you will not have as much time as you will right now in your first year. So take advantage of that and have fun. So congratulations again to all of you who are starting medical school this year. It is going to be an amazing time and I can't wait for all of you to become my colleagues. So enjoy this year. 
Congratulations again on your accomplishments. Please leave any questions or comments in the comment box below. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Love you.